Good day guys, so today we're going to solve this problem using parallelogram law. So let's read the problem first. Determine the magnitude of the resultant force FR equals F1 plus F2 and its direction measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. This is the illustration of our problem, so let's draw the forces on x and y-axis. So here guys, this is our force 1 with a magnitude of 250 pounds and this is our force 2 with a magnitude of 375 pounds so let's draw its equivalent parallel lines so from the tip of our force 1 let's draw a parallel line of the force 2 and from the tip of our force 2, let's draw a parallel line of our force 1. Since this line guys is parallel to our force 2, then this also must be 375 pounds. And since this line is parallel to our force 1, then this is also 250 pounds. Now the resultant force is at the line from the tip of our forces straight to the tip of our new parallel lines so that is where our resultant force is now let's determine guys its direction and its magnitude so let us remember guys that the property of a parallelogram is it has a total of 360 degrees of interior angles and if this angle right here guys is 30 degrees since this angle right here is 90 then this angle right here must be 60 degrees since 90 minus 30 and another property guys of a parallelogram is the opposite angles are equal so whatever the angle right here guys is equal to what our angle on its opposite side and whatever our angle right here guys is equal to our angle right here so we can identify the total angle right here guys so 60 plus 45 that is our angle right here so that is 105 degrees then the angle right here guys since they are opposite then this must also be 105 degrees since the total interior angle of a parallelogram is 360 degrees then let's just subtract the angles that we already identified so 360 minus 105 minus 105 since there are two angles and let's divide it by two since angle right here and here is equal so let's state this as our angle a guys and also this is our angle a since they are equal so angle a guys has a degree of equals to 75 degrees so this is 75 degree guys this is 75 degrees so observing in observing our parallelogram the resultant line guys divided our parallelogram into two congruent triangles so we can use the triangles in solving the magnitude of our resultant force which is this red line since this two angle guys is congruent any of the two guys we can use guys but let's just choose the bottom triangle since the direction that was asked for is from x axis counterclockwise so let's use this bottom triangle so let's make a copy of that triangle guys so here guys is a copy of our triangle right here then let's copy the magnitudes so this is this line here is our force 2 then this has 375 pounds and the magnitude right here is 250 pounds since this line is parallel to our force 1 so let's get the magnitude of our resultant force and guys the angle right here 75 degrees is also right here guys so that is 75 degrees seeing our triangle guys since this is not a right triangle so we cannot apply the Sokatoa rule but we can apply 
the law of sine and law of cosine. So, seeing that we already have two sides and one angle, then we can apply the law of cosine. So, let's make this 75 as our angle A. And this right here is our side A. Right here, guys, is our angle B. And this is our side B. And right here is our angle C. And this as our side C. So, since side A, guys, is in the red line, then whatever the magnitude of our side A that is the magnitude of our resultant force so let's apply the law of cosine A squared is equals to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos angle A so let's substitute the values guys so the value for our side B is 375 squared plus the value for our side C is 250 squared minus 2 the value for B is 375 the value for C is 250 and then cos the angle A is 75 since there is a squared in the A side guys so let's square root that one to cancel and also let's square, square root this side so we can cancel that squared guys so side A is equals to 393.1875 so that is the magnitude of our resultant force guys 393.1875 we can also round that off guys to the nearest two decimal places since we already have the magnitude for our resultant force guys so let's get the direction and it states here guys that the direction must be measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis so looking back at our parallelogram this line right here guys is our x-axis and this is our positive x-axis and this is our negative x x-axis So, from the positive x-axis right here, guys, we move counterclockwise towards the resultant force. So, we rotate towards the resultant force, which is right here, guys. So, we will add all the angles until we arrive at the line of the our resultant force. Since this is, this is 90 degrees, guys, and also this is 90 degrees, so that is 90 plus 90 and since this is also 90 degrees plus 90 and since guys this li line right here is 45 degrees then this must also be 45 degrees since that two of that is e equal to 90 degrees so let's add another 45 degrees and the only angle that we need to find is this angle right here guys so that we can add that one and we will arrive to the line of resultant force from our positive x-axis so let's get that angle guys which is the angle right here so guys in getting that angle guys we can apply the law of sine since we already have many values of our triangle so let's apply the law of sine guys since this angle right here is our angle C so we can make sine C over its opposite side which is 250 pounds is equals to sine A which is 75 degrees over its opposite side which is the resultant line 393.1875 thus we can get the value for our angle C is equals to arc sine 250 multiplied by sine 75 over 393.1875 so the value of our angle C is equals to 37.8912 degrees so let's go back to our parallelogram guys since we already have the value for this angle right here guys so let's add that up guys to our angles so plus 
37 point let's round that off guys to the nearest hundreds so let's say 37.89 so to calculate that one guys we can get our let's say our theta from the positive x-axis we rotate counterclockwise towards our resultant line is equals to we can get a value of 352.89 guys and we can round that off to 353 degrees so we already have guys the direction of our resultant force